Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel, Landscaping here with Alan. On today's video, we're going to talk about the topic of using what is known as a table saw, for a wet table saw for cutting brick, paving, concrete block type materials. So in the landscaping setting, we as landscapers, not so much DIYers because obviously you're not going to make an investment like this when you're doing a one-off project. You possibly can hire equipment like this in your area and it's definitely worth exploring the option to hire something like this. Cutting paving traditionally over, over the years was always done with maybe a con saw, maybe your electric type angle grinder with a diamond blade. Um, obviously there's different variations in between, different sizes in between of those. But nowadays the much more contemporary look, the type of paving we're using is and requires much more of a clean sleek line to it. it um, the joint sizes have become f smaller in some of the materials that are out there and precision cutting is, um, is now is what is required on a lot of projects. Not on all but a lot of projects. So yes, the skilled guys out there and girls out there can do very good cutting when it comes to con saw work, um, electric you know, grinder type things, um, even some of the battery powered equipment nowadays is becoming very, very popular and very good. Um, so saying all that and looking at all that, um, the decision has to be made at some point, do I delve into the the world of purchasing something like this machine here, which is made by Husqvarna. It's the S400F model. I believe at time of purchase, there was two models available, the large, this larger one, the slightly smaller one. Uh, power difference was very, very small, but the size of blade was um, much larger on this machine and gave a better depth of cut which suits when you're cutting some of your large, larger curbing type materials, etc. So, we explored the market, we had a look out there what was required. And at the time, this was pre, maybe porcelain, uh, lands, you know, paving products. This was back, purchased back in the day when um, we were maybe looking at Egyptian limestone, your granites, some of your honed sandstones, that kind of product where cutting was required. Um, we'll go through a couple of the different things in a minute as to the applications that this saw can provide for you. But the straightforward cutting of paving, um, where you want something like this, a nice, clean, sawn cut finish to replicate the sawn cut finish that has been given to you by the manufacturer. So where you want to cut a nice little section, maybe this is about 90 mil, 80 mil wide, you know, to finish off a run of paving. And maybe in some cases, you would have this on every other slab if you're going with a half bond pattern. So the use of saws like that there in front of us are very good for that. Yes, there are, and they're becoming quite popular of late, a bridge type saw, which gives a larger cutting surface or a larger cutting range. But price difference, you're into a different ball game and it depends totally on the type of work you do. We do have both, and um, it, there's, they do have both, both machines of their own applications as to what they can do. Um, this is a most, much more robust type machine that's very easily transported out on the site. Some of the bridge saws out there are much larger and not really suitable for transportation on the site, uh, especially if you're a one-man operation. This thing folds up quite easily on your own. Uh, this, the legs do fold up into it, they're not removable, they just fold up. There's a set of caster wheels, it can be wheeled up. Now obviously if it's up onto the back of a truck it requires some ramps. We're lucky to have a tail lift on one of our vehicles that it can be carried up and in onto the truck, brought to site quite easily. Um, two guys would easily lift this into the back of a van or up onto the back of a flatbed truck. So let's just look at some of the features and the workability of, of a machine like this. So what you will see is this main body of the machine here has a maybe 100 mil depth and that's the res reservoir for this machine as this is self-containing uh, of water and it has an irrigation system which irrigates the blade to not only keep the blade cool but also to keep the dust down and it sprays out a, a quite a fine mist of water. 
Obviously that container there needs to be cleaned out daily. It is in this case it's very easy to do so. There's a rubber a rubber bung in the bottom of the the uh, reservoir and that can be removed simply by taking it out, flushing out this whole body of the machine, getting the hose in there, washing it out. Sometimes the residue will get a little bit caked. You would want something like a little um, you know, paint scraper or a trowel just to remove all that uh, residue and get it to uh, fall out of the machine. Um, collect it in a bucket or whatever into a, you know, a container on the ground so you can dispose of it properly, not let it into drains or what have you. The, um, so that's the irrigation side of things. The next thing that we look at is the cutting table, so where the material is going to be placed. So, some of the people call this type of saw, and it's traditionally known maybe as a brick saw, because of its range of cut. This machine has a 600 mil cutting capacity, so if you have a 600 by 600 slab, you can saw that down the middle, saw 100 mil off it, 20 mil off it, whatever it may be, to work in the situation where you're cutting for. So, we look at the, uh, the actual table, and this is obviously where the name table saw comes from. There's a sliding table that passes through the blade, so the blade stays fixed. Yes, it can be lowered up or down, but it actually stays fixed during the, the cutting process. So your cut material that you're working with is placed on the table. Now, it does come with a lovely gri uh, gridded or ribbed uh, rubber surface. So once you keep that clean with the use of a little brush as you're cutting and the material and the, the bed get, you know, gets a little bit damp, there is a little bit of suction there and it keeps the material quite safe and it doesn't allow it to move around very easily. So again, you're standing at the back of the machine here, you hold the material in place and you proceed to push the blade or the material through the blade, creating your cut. It does come with a laser line which is attached to the top of the handle here you turn it on and off and the laser beam gives you a bit of an idea, we'll discuss that a little bit later on. It also comes with a fence which is um, attachable on both sides, it's quite manoeuvrable, it comes with an angle gauge on it so if you're cutting, for instance it, this, this brick here had to be cut at 45 degrees to make it go around the corner, you can put the fence on at the angle, you can mark up your line and you can saw bricks if you have a load of bricks to be cut at 45 degrees to get you a corner or if you're, you're brick paving, if you're doing an area of brick cobbles and they're all meeting at a 45 degree angle, you can set somebody up cutting away there, ripping off bricks with a 45 degree angle and you can use the little piece you've cut off as well because it's not a waste product to go in the other, the other side of the half brick or whatever way it's working out for you. So the fence is very handy, um, we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail in a second. The controls are quite simple, you have an on and off switch, this is, a, this, of course I didn't say this at the start, this is an electrically driven motor, so it comes with a waterproof socket, so you have an extension lead running from that where we have another waterproof uh, male female socket system that ensures no water can get into the, the, the plug socket and it's a way to, in some cases, an extension lead into a property um, or it could be running off a generator, so you can plug it directly into a generator and away you go. Um, a three point, we have a 3.5 kVA generator and it drives this no problem at all. A little bit of a surge on upstart on the motor but away you go after that. Um, some of the features that appeal to me when purchasing this machine after looking at a few different other options out there, yes there are petrol options with a, a petrol engine mounted up on top. To me they were a bit too cumbersome for transportation um, and it's, you know, it's nice on a site to be able to, in this situation, this machine has to be very quick off the mark to do the cut, to get back to the laying process. So turning on a switch, machine building up speed, doing your cut, walking backwards and forwards, it was very, very quick and easy. My thoughts on starting a petrol engine, having to go along, and whether it's battery start or pull start, you know, you're, you're running into the risk of, is it so slow starting that engine, I've run out of petrol, you know, it gets to the point where you say, I would have had the material cut quicker with a console, and you just lose interest in these machines. So I thought the electric was the way to go. Another feature that I liked um, quite a lot was one machine we looked at, or two machines we looked at, had removable legs. So you had to turn the machine up, extract out the legs with the use of a wing nut, pack the legs away, then put the saw into the back of the van. And I've said to myself, you're going to lose one of the legs, 
They're going to get left behind. You go to the job and the lads will say, oh, I forgot to bring the legs with me today. You're down on your hands and knees then, back of the van, up on a table, wherever you can put it. And it's just messy. I said, when I saw this, they, they're spring-loaded, so you turn the machine up on its, on its back, spring-load down, pop out the legs, they retract back up and lock away, so they're stored up in a very flat position inside of this housing that you see here. So the legs and the machine store is very flat. You've got two caster wheels here, which when the machine is on the ground, you have a grab handle here, and you can wheel the machine along. Now, yes, they're solid wheels. They don't like gravel. They don't like muck. They're built for a hard surface, but you put the saw where it's accessible to the job, get it back and forward. You know, obviously, a bit of plywood down, you can get in and out. So you make your own, uh, your own, your own roadway there. The um, the power in the saw is very, very good. Once it's not abused, once you feed the material through, very nice. And you will see in the little clip that we'll show you there um, that the saw is well able to cut through. In the video, you see it cutting through a 50 mil uh, paving brick, and what the quality of cut is and the speed of cut, and you can see the water and whatnot um, coming from the machine there to keep the dust down and keep the blade cool. Blade selection is crucial to one of these machines. The, the blade that we use is what we know as a shark blade. Um, we will discuss this later on, hopefully when we have a sit-down discussion with the uh, supplier of some of these, these blades to go through the benefits and the, the ins and outs of blades. That's a different discussion for a different, uh, a di a different day. But as I say, the, the blade quality that goes on this machine is imperative to how you get performance out of this machine. If you put the wrong blade on, you're going to think this machine is useless. You put the right blade on, different animal altogether. Um, and by us putting this blade on, we did get a, a blade supplied with the machine. It did do some quality cutting, but it had a very short uh, kind of a lifespan. It, it wore itself out very, very quickly. And it just became uh, unusable with a lot of diamond left on it. So again, uh, when this was supplied to me, it was advised we'd buy the proper blade. We just used the blade that was on it. We were doing some, uh, a lot of block, uh, four inch solid block cutting. So we used the, 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 the lesser quality blade. But when we put this blade on, it transformed this machine no end. The power was, was extracted from the motor much better. Quality of cut, speed of cut. Everything was there. People weren't getting annoyed and frustrated standing behind this machine with the engine bogging or the motor bogging down all the time. It was just power all the time and away you go. And it just was a joy to use this machine afterwards. So the cost of something like this, these types of machines, from what my experience, can start off in the eight to 900 euro range. In this case here, we're into the 13, 1400 euro range. Uh, this did come with a blade, as I say, it wasn't the best blade in the world, but it did. we did get use out of it. Some machines don't come with a blade, so obviously look at that, what the cost of a blade afterwards is. Uh, go speak to your blade manufacturers or suppliers to make sure that they, there's a blade suitable for the machine to keep you going throughout the years of work. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that side of things, as I say, it's a, it's, a, it's a video for a later date on the blades, but just make sure that the blades are available for the machine you're looking at buying. Um, you're going to then say to me, oh, that's a lot of money to be spending. I can buy my cotton saw for, you know, 450 euros there and buy a blade for 200. And, you know, it's a, it's a long way up to the like of this machine here. So one of the, the really, really good features or the good uses for this machine that I think you would want to consider when you're going down the line of investing in a machine like this is, we have the age-old problem as landscapers of weather and the bad weather that we, have, we, we do experience. And this year is no different than any. Worse in some cases for a lot of you guys out there and girls out there that are trying to get through a bit of work and the weather has been killing you all the way along. So where does this machine play a part in that? So let me give you an example. And this is where, again, not to be uh, pre preaching to you landscapers out there, but your management of your business, you have to allow for wet weather. It's something that's out there, it's not going away. Yes, you'll get periods of dry weather, very wet periods, but in every job and most jobs you do going forward into the year, you're going to have wet periods and it's going to be downtime. So what I like to try and do 
is utilise as best as I can equipment and machinery that will try and make some little bit of good of a wet day. And what you have to look at is I'm going to have a job in four months time that's going to require X, Y or Z, whether it's type of paving to be ripped down, whether you could be putting this cladding on a wall, so you've got to cut a 600 to a 400. It could be a case you need a type of brick. And one really, really good feature of a machine like this is, and we've set this up many, many times, where examples, excuse me, we might have a scenario where we have a garden that is an, an upgrade to a garden that somebody may have had a brick edging that's no longer available anymore. So what do we do? We go and buy some... So in the case of maybe a grey sandstone, we had an issue a couple of years ago where there was a grey sandstone. We couldn't get bricks to match it anymore to go and extend uh, edgings on flower beds and on top of a wall that was to be extended. So what do we do? We luckily have storage facilities here. We were able to bring home Haven from a job five, six, seven years ago. It was sitting in, 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 in Palatise Farm in our yard. We went down. It was a, a perfect match for the job. Wet day came, I knew this job was, was there to be had, I had looked at it and were specking the job up and we were just sitting and waiting on solving this problem. So the problem was sitting there all, or the solution was sitting there all along. Wet day came and what we basically had to do was make bricks of this configuration here, 200 by 100 and in the case of Haven it was 30 mils uh, thick. So what do we do? Set one of my guys up in the workshop here and kitting them out with the proper safety gear so you need ear protection when you're operating this machine. It does say you need eye protection but to be very fair, um, objects don't really get launched at you because of the way the machine is operating. All the, the waste gets fired away from you and if you try and use this machine with goggles in any way shape or form you'd want windscreen wipers on them because the spray of moisture coming from this machine exclu excluded out or ex excreted out from the machine will just fog up the glasses in seconds and now it's even more dangerous in my book because you're using your hands in a scenario where you can't see what you're doing and you could easily come in contact with the blade. So I leave that up for you to decide. It does say you should use goggles and ear protection and obviously if possible you should use them. So the scenario was we needed to cut bricks down so we brought in the paving, we set up the machine with the fence and one guy spent three, four hours one day, ripping down all the paving. I think he had to make something like 600 bricks. And we ripped them down into the 100 mil wide, rip, 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 uh, ripped them all down, and then turned around then and ripped those, I think it was a 600 slab, so we split them three ways into a, you know, it would have been slightly shorter than a six or a 200 brick because of the width of the blade, but it was, it was perfect for the scenario. Um, another little trick which I'll show later on, how do we give the rumble effect? to the actual brick because the brick that we were replicating wasn't a saw and cut edge like this. It had a rumbled effect to it. So we leave that to another day as to show you how we replicated the rumbled effect. But what it meant was on that wet day, one of my employees spent four hours that day cutting down the bricks. One of the other guys was rumbling the edges on them. And it meant that two guys, one wet day, were able to be utilised, made some good of the day. The products that we ripped down and manufactured, we put on a pallet, shrink wrapped down and left for storage for I think maybe six, seven, eight weeks till the project was able to start or maybe even longer and we had secured a deposit on the job so it was good to go and ripped down the material, put it to safekeeping. When we got to the day of actually being on site of that job, we offloaded the materials the same as we did from collecting it from a manufacturer. So there's something that was worth bearing in mind when it comes to wet day work that you can utilize that, whether it's yourself a one-man band, whether it's you and another employee that you can say, I'm paying this guy for the day and um, I can get him, or this girl for the day, and I can get him to go in and rip out this paving for me. It's a very easy job to utilize this machine that way. Obviously, there's other scenarios where, you know, if you put your thinking cap on, you can think of a way of solving the problems that uh, the wet day brings. So, again, we come to the part in the video where I maybe talk a little bit about the improvements that I would like to see if I if I, I had a choice on this type of machine. Um, to be very fair and to put things into perspective, a machine like this isn't designed for, you know, 
what would you say the same accuracy or precision of cut as a bridge saw will. It's not a replacement. It sometimes maybe if the work you're doing doesn't require a bridge saw, this is a very good option. If you need a bridge saw, you need a bridge saw. That's a different day's work where you're cutting nine, a hundred mil, one meter, one point two, one point five slabs into these porcelain ranges now where they're quite a long flag system and they want these big boards running along the ground and that's what you need to use your bridge saw for. But for the type of work that we've described, where you're into 600 mil and less, bricks, edgings, brilliant machine. Where this machine falls down slightly is when it comes to the like of your fence. If you think you're going to just put that on there, square up a slab and rip it through and hope that it's going to cut the perfect 600 uh, mil down to a 300, it just doesn't really have the 100% accuracy. So you have to think outside the box a little bit. And we use things like, we, we clamp on um, fences that run the entire length of the product that ensure that it stays square. That when we put the product up to it, instead of it having, in this case, a kind of a 200 mil surface to work that's longer, works off one side, it's out of harm's way. That's something we use quite a bit. Um, and it's just things that we've had to come up with just to make it that little bit, get that little bit more accuracy out of the machine so it can be achieved. But for cutting down bricks and things like that, that fence is more than adequate. Um, if you're cutting your sandstone materials where you have a wider joint going in, again, this fence is perfect because a little bit of tolerance there for the, uh, as the paving product you use yourself won't be defined as good as a sawn cut edge anyhow, anyway. Um, that's one little thing I suppose maybe it could have been looked at as a way to maybe give a little bit more structure to the uh, fence system to give it a little bit more accuracy of cut. But in fairness, the machine isn't designed, you know, with that full uh, accuracy in mind. So, you know, to be fair to it, give it a, give it its dues, you know. The laser that it comes on uh, comes on the machine is a battery powered unit. You put in a little small A, a battery into it, and that gives you laser light. You want to be cutting in the dark to see that light. It, we've tried everything, and it just um, no waste of time. So much so that. We haven't had a battery in that for years. We come up with our own system of marking, gauging out, squaring off, and away we go using our fence system that we've made ourselves or the fence that's here with the machine. We don't bother with the laser. It just, you know, you're out in a fine sunny day and laser shining down on a, on a white material or a grey material, very, very hard to see it. And when the water is spraying down, no. So, again, not really much of a, of a thing, you know. Um, that's really all. We, we did have a little bit of an issue where the uh, the submersible pump that comes with the unit did fall out of it because it's not actually mounted in there very well. There's no real secure point for it. It's just clipped in with a hose. Did fall out and got damaged. We were able to repair it ourselves, which was you know a bit of a saving. But and it's just something we have to be careful with when we're flipping the machine up to put it in its transport position that the um, that the motor there, you know, a cable tie or something would keep it in. But it's just some little thing that, you know, could have been looked at. Other than that, the features of the machine can't give out about it too much. Um, the, the benefits of the machine and the performance of the machine outweigh any little thing that you would, you know, like to see as an improvement. So, that's really it on the video, folks. It's the Husqvarna S400F. You will see in the little clip the machine working. Any questions on this type of machine or bridge saws or things like that, feel free to drop us a message or ask us any question you'd like. Um, or if there's something, type of material you want to cut and you're just maybe in fear of using a machine like this, we'll advise you as to whether you can or can't or how best to approach it. Um, if it's another type of machine you're looking at and you want a bit of advice, feel free to drop us a message on the comments below or check out our Facebook page, Landscaping with Alan, and you can drop us a message through that there or our email address is there also. So that's really all I can say, say on this um, this machine here. I hope it's of use to you. I hope you've got some information that's of use in, if you're sitting on the fence or you've been thinking about purchasing a machine like this. It helps you make that decision. Uh, thanks very much to the subscribers. Thanks very much again for all the lovely comments and the uh, the well wishes and the uh, appreciation for what we've done so far and what we intend to do in the future. If you like what you see and it's of use to you, 
please subscribe to the channel, ring the little bell, and that will notify you as to when the next video is going to come online. Thanks very much for your time and watching this video. Until the next time, take care folks. Bye bye.